All right, do we have any viewers yet? Yep. Excellent. Welcome, guys. It's Friday night freestyle, and it's, uh, what, season... Season three, episode three, right? Insane. How many Friday night crazy paintings we've done. So, I've had a lot of requests this weekend, or this week. I keep thinking it's Sunday, don't you? Yeah, I keep mind. I figured it out. Oh, you got it now? I keep thinking it's Sunday, so I keep saying this weekend. But I've had a lot of requests this week to do like an Aurora Borealis seascape scene. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> to do a seascape scene on a 16 by 20 inch camera. So something similar to this. All right, we can do something like that. But we'll do it right here, live in front of you guys. Make it different. Have it, you know, Aurora Borealis, all different kind of colors. So tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And just to let you guys know, you can name this painting towards the end of the stream. When we start getting done, we'll ask for the names and you can start coming up with a name of what you want to name it. It's a whole lot of fun. And you can buy this painting before anyone else can even get it. Gotta beat the devil out of the brush, right? So you can name the painting and you can buy the painting before anyone can by going to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, right? You're buying it from me, Paint With Josh, through Etsy. Dot com. And it's a whole lot of fun. Let's go through the colors that we have today. Oh, you know what? We're missing white. We need to get some white out of the box. So bright red, sap green, dark sienna brown. Uh, sorry, that's dark sienna brown. This is Van Dyke brown. Yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, thalo green, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, and then we'll get a little bit of titanium white out. I don't know how I missed that. How did we miss the white? It's okay. It gives us a chance to... Uh, recognize Lauren Hansen. She sent me this off of my wish list. So thank you, Lauren. We'll be able to paint a gorgeous seascape tonight because of you on Friday night freestyle. It's going to be fun. Man, I love Friday nights. Get to come up here, hang out, let go of all the stress of the week, right? It's very cool. Hi, guys. Hey, Dan, what's happening? Hello, Patsy, Helen, Helen. Welcome, everyone. If everyone watching over on YouTube, make sure you give me a thumbs up. The more thumbs ups we get over on YouTube, the more the video gets shown to more people. You know what I mean? Then we reach more of a bigger audience. So we're gonna take our paper towel. We just literally finished putting Bob Ross liquid clear all over our canvas. So it was nice and slick and wet, right? Very thin amount. Doesn't take a whole lot. When I dip my brush in, I only really dip it in about a quarter of an inch into the bristles and then spread it out as much as you possibly can. And then even as good as I am, right? A professional, I still put too much on. So go back in and wipe it off. Get all that excess, right? Very cool. Look at all that excess that came off. That would make it harder for us to do our painting. So you don't want the paint. You can never wipe it so much that the canvas will be completely dry. But you don't want it to be too dry or too wet. We got all of our colors. Everything looks good. I wonder if I need any more. Remember, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Hi from Florence, watching from Michigan. Roberta! Roberta, the Super Swan General, one of my oldest, longest running fans. Roberta Harris, she's awesome. So let's put in, we're gonna decide what we want our sky to look like, what we want our ocean to look like, all depending on what color we put down as our under color, right? So why don't we take a little of our phthalo green and we're gonna throw it into little swipes over here. And remember, anywhere that doesn't have paint on the canvas is going to be so super bright if you hit it with your white paint. We're gonna do the most cool little trick you've ever seen. And with this, this Paint with Josh undercolor, throw the white on and just let it fly, right? That's the technique. I wanna have my, my uh, ocean back here as well. It's gonna be about, three, about two thirds of the way up the canvas, right? So this whole bit be our seascape. And then we have all of our sky. I mean, you could change it, whatever you want. You could do a half and half. You could do it lower, higher. How big do you want your wave? How small do you want it? Totally up to you. All right, let's take a little bit more of that thalo green, and that way if we have any amount of white up into our sky, it's going to bounce off of this thalo green and really brighten it up. And then you can adjust how much white or how much color you want to have just based off of, you know, the amount of brightness that you allow to show through. It's very cool. Let's get our blue. All right, we're going to come in, and we take our blue down in here, and get a little bit of blue. We'll throw some brown for the sand, too. And remember, we leave, got to leave a dark disconnect in between our, our colors, especially in the water. Up in the sky, it doesn't matter so much. We're going to blend the sky all together. But in the water, I love having a little dark disconnect, right? Maybe a little bit of blue just came sweeping down through there for whatever reason. 
So you got your green and your blue and you got stuff all over the place, right? And when we hit it with our white paint, it's literally gonna be like magic. This is the part that you don't show all your friends. All right, like guys, come over. I wanna show you guys, I've, I've, been, I've been practicing with this guy I paint with Josh. And I wanna show you something really cool, right? We're gonna come watch me do a painting. And they're gonna be like, right? So they come over, you do this part away from all of them, right? You don't wanna show them this part. Cause then when we do it with our white paint, it's just gonna look like magic, right? So a little bit of brown on top of all those other colors. Put it down in here, maybe we'll have a little, little sandy beachy area. Who knows, right? Blend it all together. And then when we hit it with our white paint, we'll see what happens. So we've got a brown stripe, got a blue stripe, got a green stripe, got a blue stripe, got green, got blue. It's all mixed in all over together. And it's just gonna be the most fantastic time we've ever had. Are you guys ready? Tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Or when is your paint anniversary? Because my paint anniversary is coming up on April 12th. It's gonna be the day that I started painting four years ago in 2019. I can't believe it's been that long, four years of me painting. And initially nobody watched my videos and uh, it took a long time to build to the 140,000 followers that we're at now, right? So, all right, let's see where we got people watching from. Everybody check in. Tell me where you're watching. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you got that thumbs up high lit. The more thumbs ups we have, the more people are gonna see the video, right? Which is exactly what everybody wants. Now, let's take, maybe we can move Facebook just a smidge and that way the, uh, the glare will go away. There we go, perfect. All right, guys. Now, everybody be sure to check in. I gotta move one little thing. Tell me where you're watching from. I love knowing where you guys are watching from all over the world. It's crazy. We've got fans everywhere. Oh, we got an order. Who did we get an order from? The order went through already. Um, is that for this painting? Let's see. We're going to have to find out. London, you may have to come back upstairs and uh, let me know what just happened with that. So I just saw the order go off. I think it's for this painting, so it might have already sold. And now we're just going to get to relax and watch Josh paint it, right? So we're going to come over here. Gotta have like wicked bright Aurora Borealises if we're gonna do a, a nighttime seascape with a crashing wave. Gonna get our little bit of yellow over here just to brighten it up the smallest touch, right? Love that cad yellow, it just makes it so bright. And it changes that green, right? So it's not just white on the phthalo green, you get all these little differences. So let's come in. Who knows, maybe we had this little far off little guy. Yes? Excuse me, influencer, your painting has some... Yeah, that's, this one right here? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's crazy. Who bought it? Was it, it the name looked familiar? Yes. You the same person as before um, the, on TikTok? No. Okay. I don't, I don't remember. I don't want to give out this your is, real name if you don't... This is their second piece. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Like, I appreciate it so much. We're going to take this two-inch brush. We're going to come in here. I hope you like it by the time we get done painting it. All right, I'm going to pull this guy off because he's a little further away. And I know it gets kind of hard to see... My hand gets in the way, right? Just pull them off in this kind of outward direction. Doesn't all have to be the same amount of paint. And if you want it to grow a little bit in certain areas or be brighter in certain areas, just kind of dab in this little thing. I, I saw Bram do this the other day and I was like, I'm gonna start doing that. Look at how cool it is. Just adding that little bit. It doesn't have to grow as far as we need it to grow, right? It doesn't have to be the entire thing. You can get this far away, little Aurora. It's gorgeous. Oh, it's gorgeous. Now again, make sure your swipes are all going the same direction. Otherwise, it's not going to make any sense. We'll come back to that white and yellowy pile that we've created over here. And who knows, we had another one come in. It was like this. Just coming down through there, baby. Fantastic. Maybe we'll start over here. Try to stay out of the way. All right, pulling up in that same direction. And again, maybe we wanted a little bit brightness there. A little brighter area over here. So we just dump a little bit extra paint. And we'll come up, try to get the brushes out of the way, stay out of your guys' way. Look at this. Just based on our pressure and pulling, you get all these cool little auroras, right? And then I like to give it a little swipe down. I don't want the two colors to connect, but I never like it to be this perfect line at the bottom. So we're gonna pull it down just a little bit. You got these really cool things happening. And again, the more that you do, the brighter your sky is gonna be. Say you didn't like one, you could brighten up your whole sky. And then it would turn into a sky kind of colored like this one down here. If we brightened it up, threw a whole bunch of uh, color into the back and blended it all out, right? So I always say, what do you want it to look like? And then that's what you paint, right? We're not here painting mine, we're here painting yours. 
Maybe there was another one that came down like that. Straight through. Came down in. Maybe that one had a little wiggle. I don't know. Just because. And now we're going to have more paint that we can flick up at different places, right? Very cool. Come over here. Just again with that pressure, right? It's all about the amount of paint on the brush, the amount of pressure on the canvas, and practice. So we're coming in, we're squeezing it. A lot of pressure, pulling up, right? Grabbing it, pulling up. Not trying to allow all the colors to blend together, but you get these really cool things that start to happen. And we don't want all the color to go to the same color, right? But all of a sudden we got all these gorgeous little swipes. Oh, I hope the buyer likes it already, right? Take them like this guy back here. If you didn't really like that one, which I do, I don't want to move it. You could mix it all up and blend it all away. Get these really cool things, right? We can, we can get one more little stripe out of here. Take that same coloring. Maybe we come down, maybe it's a little, a little bit steeper of an angle of our angle here, but we're going on the same angle as we push back, right? So we're grabbing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. No matter where we are, we're pushing at that same angle backwards, right? Very cool. Very cool. I like this one already. And we're gonna come in here and just very lightly blend whatever color is underneath it's gonna help that disappear. Look like a far off little cloud back there. Swipe these guys up, blend them all together. From the bottom to the top, you got this wicked little Aurora back there. So cool. So cool, right? Anything that we allow to blend into itself or into any little bit of color will provide that background color. If we want to stick a rock up here or if your wave is crashing a certain way, man, that looks cool. Like they come down and just smack down upon the earth. So awesome. All right, let's wash these brushes off. Remember, tell me guys where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? When's your paint anniversary? Because mine's on April 12th. Has anyone else started on April 12th? Because that would be kind of cool. We'd be paint anniversary pals. I'm going to trademark that paint anniversary pals. <laughs> Let's be paint anniversary pals with Paint with Josh. All right. Clean off this brush right here. I did a really cool interview on my YouTube channel. Well, not my YouTube channel, on Gabby's YouTube channel. So, Gabby the Oil Painter, if you go find her over on YouTube, did a really cool, like, half hour interview with her. It was really chill, just kind of sat out. Just like I would be in here, you know what I mean? Super, uh, super relaxed and hanging out. And we just talked about how I got started painting and why I want to paint and where am I going to be in five years, all that, you know. It was a really cool, chill little interview. So, fun thing. And uh, if you want to check it out, it's on her YouTube page, which is at Gabby the Oil Painter. G-A-B-I the Oil Painter. And uh, you can go find that interview. I took the link and posted it on my Facebook page, so you can go over there and find it. And it was a lot of fun. It was a whole lot of fun. Maybe we want just one more little bit that like, maybe came in and connected to this guy, right? Again, change yours however you want it to look. Just leave those little dark areas, little bright areas, have it come down a little differently. Ah, oh, so cool. And the more you streak it out into the sky, that's why you want to have that dark color out there, right? You don't want to just be bare. If it's bare canvas, it'll show up so bright out there. Nothing will blend if you don't have that color beneath it to blend with, right? Now, let's come in and throw a seascape together. And come into our little pile. Let's have all the same colors beneath, so it doesn't really matter, right? And because we didn't use a piece of tape on this one, you can get your old uh, yardstick out or a mall stick, however you want to make a straight line, or just do it by hand, right? And we said, I wanted mine to be up a little bit higher, so about right there. So not... Not exactly halfway across. That's probably a straight line. And we're going to come in here like this and just go side to side. Don't need to go all the way to the edge, right? And there will be our horizon line for our painting. Very simple and cool. Let me see where you guys are watching from. Let's see, 19 people over on YouTube. That's wicked. Make sure you guys give me a thumbs up over there. Got to have the thumbs up. Otherwise, it won't show it to a bunch of people. Let's see. Uh, thank you. Love the interview. Best teacher of all time. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. We're going to take that same brush that we just made this line with. I'm going to start to light up different areas, leaving other areas dark, right? Not every piece has to connect to itself, right? And we just have that little bit back here. That's it. That's all you really need. A little lower on this side, a little higher up on this side. Take our one-inch brush or two-inch brush, whatever's more comfortable for you, and just stretch those guys together till they start to blend and you start to see little things and little bits of water. I just touched the canvas right here. 
little bits of water and little, little stuff, right? Just don't overdo it. You got those dark areas, you got your bright areas. It's all pretty much the same color, right? So we don't want to overdo it so bad that we lose all those colors. And that's what we're here for, right? So now we're going to go on this angle for our, our um, little mustache of our wave. I don't even know what else to call it. It looks like a mustache to me, and that's why I call it a mustache. Everything's about angles, right? Angles is the fourth P to paint with John. No, I'm just kidding. All right, what were we doing? We're going to scrape up this whole pile, get rid of this yellow. Don't really need it much anymore when I have our nice bright colors. Put that yellow over in front of those yellows. Maybe I'll use it tonight. Maybe I'll use it on a different painting. Who knows? Let's go to a different, a smaller fan brush too. Some of the times those bigger fan brushes, you want to make you want to push too hard and then your thing becomes too big. Big pain in the butt is what they are. Okay. Now I want to use one of these layers of light, right? Maybe this one back here and have all that filled in. So what if we came back with our little mustache up to the top, down like that, right? That'll be our first one. Our first little wavy so far away. Now what I want to do is feed this bit of white to that bit of color, and there's not a lot of room. I don't want them to touch. I just want to feed it out there. So small, little teeny tiny bits of detail. Nothing crazy, right? Nothing crazy. Come back with our little brush. Softly push them. It just mushes them down that little bit, right? Got that little bit of detail out there for the buyer. They're the only ones that are going to be looking at it that hard. Okay, we're going to slide our wave out. Now we're going to come in with the next one as we rotate over, right? This guy is going to come in. Actually, what if he went up like this and then we had one come over here and then we had another one. Who knows? You get all these little bits of water coming in, right? Slide this guy back. It's just a bit of background. No one's looking over here. No one's except for, you know, your instructor is going to be looking over here for any details because all of our big details are gonna be in this crashing wave that's gonna take up this whole center area right here, right? Take this guy, lightly feed it back to that last little bit of light, leaving a little bit of darkness in there, that's all we need, right? Throw a little light back here, shake it off, throw them together, soften it, soften it, soften it. Paint with Josh is like a, it's like in between textured and brushed out, right? Got all these little dips, all these little humps, Little peaks, little things here, little things there. Coming down, peaks up again, comes down. Helps add distance to your waves. Right, need a little bit. Come down right there. Now our big crasher is gonna come down and just crash over this whole thing. Are you guys ready? I don't think you guys are ready. I don't think you guys are ready enough anyway. Let's take a little bit of black. And just put that black back in here underneath this wave. Because you got to retain that dark shadow back there, right? And I'll show you why here in a second. Don't want to have any bits of color underneath, so make it go dark again. And then when we start to flip it back, it's all going to make sense, right? Get all the dark color off of that brush. We're going to come back in, load it up with some white. Maybe we'll put some yellow in there. Nice and pretty. I can't believe this thing went already. Okay, let's come in here and grab our white and first just kind of initially place where we want the tip of our wave to be. And maybe he starts crashing down like that. And so we can start to feed that guy back on himself and then we'll start to rotate. Little flicks, little flicks. Longer we go, longer and then less pressure at the end so you get those cool little, little flick little things. Oh, they're so cool. Love them. All right now we're gonna rotate the brush and the angle and start going back this way. All right, like we're crashing up into something, throwing the water off into your studio, right? You don't want to have it go all different directions or fall down too quickly. The goal is to throw it out at yourself. Throw it over here. Let it grow crazy. Oh, I love it. All right now we're going to take the rest of that light color. And because we have our blue and our green in little swipes right here, it's going to explode into this gorgeous eyeball. Just fantastic. Let's dab this off. And then we're going to clean this off. And then we're going to get rocking and rolling. So tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? When's your paint anniversary? Let me look at the comments real quick. See what comments we got here. South Carolina from Robin Roberts. Watching from Southern Alabama. You guys are awesome. Somebody left a sad face by mistake. Rooster from Tennessee. Thank you for checking in, everyone. Thank you for watching. 
You guys are wicked awesome. We're gonna take these little bit of white. Now we're gonna come into that super bright yellow again and see what we can do as we start flicking this guy back to that next little bit of light. Oh, look at that green. Look at that green light up. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, remember, we can always come back and fix our little line right here. That's why I don't put it in hard in the beginning, just very light pressure. So we can flick our little ocean back. You see, as it goes into that darkness, creates a little bit of shadow on top of our wave. Very, very pretty. All right, now we're gonna go back and soften it. So the more we come out here, trying to reach that last little bit of light, the more it's going to extend out to the side. Right, as we go out to the side, it's gonna help the wave look flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter as we go out over here. And then it's gonna rotate more and curve over, right? Now let's clean off that brush. Wash it off in the old bucket. Give it an old wash. Come down here, load it up with paint again. So we can make a nice clean line coming in here. Not too much pressure. Doesn't have to be the straightest line you've ever seen either. That's the best part. You want it to be a little bit wavy, right? At least I do. The water is not just a perfectly straight thing out there in the in nature, is it? There we go, swiping them up. You get all these cool little things happening back here, guys. Super colorful. We're gonna take our one-inch brush like this, slide it back, slide it back very softly, right? We're not trying to move the paint, just trying to soften it with the bristles. Helps it dry a little bit faster. Gives you a little softer look. Right? Everything is a soft little touch. And then we'll come back and highlight those bright areas again. Keeping that dark shadow though. That's our shadow of our water coming in. You gotta have it. Now we're gonna take our same brush, start down here. Very light pressure. The more pressure you have and the more paint you put on here, the brighter your eye is gonna be, right? So depending on how bright you want your eye to be, gotta leave our little dark disconnect in there. Gotta have that little dark line. And then very light pressure on our eye and you can have it just grow like crazy. Have it be very soft. Lots of stuff you can do, right? But leave that little dark disconnect. We're gonna come back and fill it in anyway with our dark spray, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Wash this brush off over here. Tell me where you're watching from, guys. Everywhere in the world, we got 140,000 followers. Make sure you guys have, on Facebook, if you're opening, or if you're looking at it, you've opened it up and uh, you got all those little emojis down around the bottom and you can tap them and little bubbles start coming up. Hit all those little emojis, help me out. The more times you guys are tapping that screen, the more Facebook and YouTube are like, hey, we need to show this to more people, right? And we came from TikTok over here to, to YouTube and Facebook for you guys. So we would have a wicked awesome show for you off of TikTok, right? Everybody gets mad that we're on TikTok so much. They're just my largest audience. Here we go. All right, now we're gonna come in with that dark. I'm gonna pop up underneath, creating our little dark disconnect keeping our little angles as we go down, smashing into the canvas over here. I can hear it just crashing, rolling in. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. I love doing these little seascapes like this, right? Came down, smack down upon to the ground. Gotta have our little S-shaped curve. I talk about it all the time where you have this real stretched out S. Like if you were to take a, if you were to write an S and then really pull it, it would look like this long stretched out thing. And that's exactly what we want it to be, right? Fantastic. All right, let's wash all this dark color off. Remember guys, copy the link, send it over to your grandma, send it to your mom. Be like, hey, you might enjoy this guy. He's a little crazy and he takes some getting used to, but he's pretty good and, uh, and you might enjoy watching him, right? There we go. At least it's more fun than all the other guys that are just soft talkers and boring, if you ask me. There we go. At least I'm fun to watch. And we're doing it all for free. There we go. Somebody said, don't worry about selling the painting so much. Just do it like Bob. And I was like, oh, you mean like give it away for free every single day? Okay, yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing, lady. So I appreciate that you're uh, watching my reels and, uh, and finding me like that. Excellent. Okay, now we're on this sort of an angle, right? This wave is not a perfectly straight wave because we went with an angle back here. So this wave's on an angle. So our foam is gonna have to be on a steeper angle. Everything all decides, you know, it all depends with how it turned out for you, right? How does yours look? That's what I always say, get a little bit of our liquid white. Gotta have it, I keep it in a little Petri dish down here. Smash it into there, smash it into that side. That way there's not too much. And then we can work in slowly from the top, 
picking up that little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, just getting it so our brush is all messy and wet and, you know, like, I mean, it's, it's messy and wet when you pull it through here, but this is like more sloppy for some reason. I don't know why. It just is. Okay, now we're going to come in just with the corner, come up above the crest of our wave just a little bit. Just, just a, an eighth of an inch even is just enough to push it back, right? Tap at the edge right here like it's starting to fall over. And now we're going to stay half above our shadows. And we got to rotate the brush over. Half above the shadows, half into our watery spray, right? Back here where we left those dark areas, it's because we're going to come back and fill some of that area with our, our watery, crashy spray. Oh, it's so great, guys. Come up here, right? This part is like, we're going to mix it up just like a cloud. So if you're like, oh my God, he just messed up the whole thing. No, no, no. We're going to come over here with our one inch brush. Just ever so lightly, like it, like you're touching a sleeping baby's face, right? You ever had, you ever been looking down at a baby in a crib and you're like, oh, I just want to, I just want to just caress their cheeks so softly, right? But I don't want to wake them up. Because if we wake them up, then we got to go back to babysitting and we can't paint anymore, right? So you just got to go so softly like it's a sleeping baby. Oh, because that liquid white's really going to want to make it grow far, right? So, so lightly. Oh, and we even get softer as we come up here. Oh my goodness. So soft, so soft. You don't want it to grow too far. And you can always come back in, bash in a couple more little bits of water if you went a little bit too ham on it, right? So lightly, not really touching the top bits, especially up here as they're falling down. But look at all that tumultuous just explosion that's about to come. Just poof, hits the ground, goes crazy, right? And you decide where you want it to hit. Maybe ours hit right there. So we'll pull off to the side. Get all this spray. Oh, maybe we'll pull down a little, just like so. Go over to the side. You get that wet look already back there, right? And that's just back here where we've decided our wave has come down and crashed upon the earth. Man, that's cool. That is cool. Now you can come back and use all this bright area to stick a big old rock in right here or whatever, whatever you decide, right? But first we gotta wash all the color off of that brush. Get all that dark color on there and our foam isn't gonna be very bright and pretty now, is it? Excellent. Remember guys, tell me where you're watching from. <clears throat> tell me if you know what the squeezy bit is called. I call it a squeezy bit. I don't know what it's really called. I mean, I do because people have told me online now what it's called, but before it's just a squeezy bit because I've never taken an art class. I've never gone to school. I've never even really watched anyone else's videos besides Bob. I watched a couple of Bram things to like check out when he was doing his moons and stuff before I started doing my big moons. And I saw that his were already all pre-done when he started the video. And I was like, okay, well, I got to figure out a way to do it, you know, and show people how to do, you know, the whole thing. Let's tap in a couple more bits of brightness into this guy. And so then we started, then I got the cake pan and we started going crazy with the cake pan and it's a lot of fun. So, but I don't really watch anyone else. I haven't taken a class. I'm just here to show you that you can really just paint how you like and what looks good to you. And you're really going to have more fun than if you were to stress over, oh, I got to get it everything perfect. You know, if I'm going to this class, everything's got to be perfect right now. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. And that's the most fun. We can just sit here and have a good time, right? We're gonna take our white on the brush, just like that. And then since we decided we were gonna hit down here, we have to go backwards first, right? You can go all the way back if you wanted to, and then you can adjust. But a lot of people go straight up their wave right away without even turning the brush. And then it looks like a, like a ramp. Has yours ever looked like a 45 degree angle that you could just jump a motorcycle off of, right? Be fantastic. So slide it back, slide it back first. And then decide all we're really worrying, we're, we're, we're really working on the middle of our foam because we can add to the front and we can add to the back. So we're just working on the middle section right now, right? Then we come back in here, start sliding it forward and adjusting our angle and coming down like this, right? We're starting to see the foam build now, but our wave still looks like a wall of water because there's nothing helping it, right? So if you just go straight up at a 45, it's just going to look like a ramp, right? So you have to take your brush, go in through your paint, I'll show you how we're gonna load it up like this. Come in here. Let's see if you guys need to, do you guys need a closer up view? Are we liking the view? You guys wanna zoom in? What do you want? You wanna zoom in on Facebook? We'll zoom in a little bit, turn the camera. Oh, there we go, just a little, 
Just a little, Josh. There we go. Perfect. That's going to be fun. All right, over on YouTube, we'll zoom in. Maybe a little bit too far. Maybe we'll come down a little. I love how we don't have this prepped beforehand, Josh. It's okay. Perfect. That's all we need to see is the bottom of the screen anyway. Right now, we're going to take that white that we just loaded into the brush. Everybody's all zoomed in close. Now we're going to start to rotate up, but there's almost, there's got to be a ball back here. There's got to be a little, a little something. I mean, do you have a, do you have your own little Bob Ross? Yeah, turn it into a happy little tree or a wave or a rock, right? So, but my point is, right, if you have something circular there, you can imagine there's a ball right here. And we have to go around that ball before we start to curve up, right? Don't want to get any more paint on Bob than there already is. His poor neck is about to snap off. Okay, so remember, we've got to go around that ball. So we're going to start to go back, and then we flick up. And we're trying not to allow our two colors to touch too close, you know, too much. Kind of have that little air of mystery in there. So start flicking it up, sliding it back. Look at that wave just grow. We're getting longer, we're getting straighter off to the side over here because this side's gonna come down, right? It's not all one wall of water, even though it sort of looks like a shadow like we did back there, right? Not the same. Let's turn the brush. Now we're really gonna start to come back and then flick up, making that little circle, right? Making it look round, coming in. If you just go straight up, it's not gonna look round, right? You gotta go back, slide it back, decide where it was, little things, little bits as they start to curl up the wave, right? <sighs> wow, look at that. That is wicked, right? And then we come back in, you come down, and you decide what you want it to look like, right? Just like that, very cool. Soft little bit of, a, of an angle, right? The angle's not extreme, it's not flat, it's just a little soft, like a 10 degree, 15 degree angle. I'm not a mathematician, I'm a painter, right? You pull this guy out as far as you want. You got all that foam that's about to just roll up into your wave. What do you guys think of that? Give me a couple taps. I gotta see these emojis flying on the screen. Let's see. All right, well, we'll just turn off the Facebook stream since nobody's watching. We don't have any emojis flying over there. I'm just kidding, guys. We're gonna take our one inch brush. We're gonna flip it like this. Just like that, just making it soft. Gotta make it soft, right? Josh is in between texture and brushed out. So it's like a little half and half. Soften it up. All of a sudden, you got this wicked cool bit of foam. It's all rolling up. Man, that's fantastic. Now we're going to come up here again. We're going to connect these little bits by coming over to the side, stopping, going down. Stopping, going down, right? And you start to connect this bit of water. And blend it back into itself. Keeping our little differences in color that we always talk about. Now, this guy's kind of tricky. You have to kind of make a circle, but only connect on this half side, right? So we're Coming down, we're just dragging it a little bit. Don't want to lose all the darkness, right? There we go. What's it look like to you? You decide. Let it blend up. Throw these guys back. All depends on our pressure, right? The paint pressure practice. What your water's gonna look like. It just looks like it's just kind of lipping over right there. It's exactly what I wanted. Perfect. Perfect, you guys. Okay, now that we have all that brown, Got all of our brown color, our two brown colors down underneath it, even though it looks black. There, there are brown colors under there. So why don't we light them up with a little bit of yellow and we'll make this sandy beach color. So nice. All right, so we don't need a whole lot of white because it's already on black canvas. It's going to be very dark anyway. So let's take a little bit of the, of the yellow ochre, just a little patch of that little bit of white that we had mixed with our yellows earlier. And now I want to stay about a quarter inch down, right? You don't want to be right underneath and you don't want to be too far underneath. Otherwise, it's not going to make any sense. Again, this is our little shadow that we're trying to retain. Our little dark separator, dark separator, right? Your dark separator is going to sell your painting for you. Come in here, just right in between, about a quarter inch, keeping that dark line in there, right? That's our little bit of foam. That's the shadow that our foam has created. And come up following that little angle, wherever your dark line is, follow around. All right, doesn't have to all be the same. It's all gonna mix together anyway. All right, let's take a clean, dry two inch brush. We're gonna come in here and just push down. But this is the biggest mistake I'll see beginners make. They'll push down their sand and they'll go like this. And then they'll go, all right, that's my sand, I'm all done. 
and you go, oh, if you were to flip your canvas upside down, this looks like that, doesn't it? Doesn't look like sand. Looks like Aurora Borealis. So in order to correct that, we have to sideways swipe all those vertical swipes down. Get rid of them, right? Work at it, work it in until they go away. You don't want any downwards swipes, right? Just like that, swipe it away, get this wet sandy beach look. And we actually retain that dark line right there. Good job, guys. Good job, Josh. I actually did it for once. Okay, let's come in here. Just because when you add that little bit of that extra darkness, it just helps it sit up that little bit more. Oh, I just love it. it. Makes it more 3D to me. Like it's, uh, you know, it's creating its own little mini shadow underneath its own foamy self, right? Not all the lines have to connect. They don't all have to be the same size. Just want to be a little darker than what's out there, right? Maybe even this guy way out there. He's got a little darkness underneath him too. It just helps it sit up a little bit, at least in my brain. And if you guys are my followers, then you must like something I do. So maybe that is it, right? We'll take our, uh, our liquid white on the edge of the knife, come back in here to our white. Maybe we'll snag a little bit of that yellowy whitish mixture. That mix, get that all up in there. And then we'll have this crazy little bit of our foam. It'll be fantastic. But you gotta have some liquid white in order to make it watery and runny. And then it'll come off of your knife very easily, right? Try not to cover up the Paint with Josh sticker so everyone knows where we are. Scrape this guy up, come back on top of that darkness. Not trying to cover every single piece, right? Stay wherever your dark lines were, throw some light over the top, and you'll have this really cool little shadow under there, right? Not trying to cover everything. Not every single bit needs a bit of paint on it, right? Just a little bit of foam out there. All these different colors, there's yellow, there's the white that's in there. All depends on where you scrape it up from on your pile, where you picking it up, where you depositing it into your wave, right? Starting to climb up the edge. This is all the stuff that sits on the top. It sits on the top of the water and just flows, floats, goes any which way that it wants to go. Oh, guys, look at this foam. It's starting to climb up the wave back here. You never know where it's gonna be, where it's gonna stop. Right? Just have a little bit of that light over the top of those shadows so it looks like we've got a little bit of lift. We've got a little facelift on this guy. Very cool. Okay, now here's the softening bit that takes a little bit of practice because we have all this wet paint up on the canvas. And this stuff is extra wet compared to the stuff that's back here that's still wet, right? So we're going to take our brush, not really adding any paint to it. It's just some of the green paint that we had working from back here. We're gonna swipe it into the wave and then follow those angles and then pull our hand back. And that way we can't smush it up too far, right? Again, we don't want these colors to touch anywhere inside of our eye, right? That's what we don't want to happen. So start all the way from the edge, slide, spin. Get that little bit of softness. Look at all that white that we picked up and those different colors because of that liquid white. So we dab that off on a paper towel. Didn't clean it, just dabbed it. Come in again, swallow those, follow your little swipes. Dab it off, come back again, right? Following it up the wave, get all these soft little details, retain our little shadows, get these little bits that are floating in different places. So, so cool, guys. Oh, man, I love it. If you love it, make sure you give me a little thumbs up, a tappy, a little heart, a happy emoji face, some sort of something, just to show me that you're in love with it. We're gonna grab our liquid white, and now this is a little bit of a fun part a fair amount of liquid white as we come up into here and we just lay it over the top of that dark separator, let it fall down into here and then we'll go soften it with our brush, right? So you can bring it in, start to soften it or we can pull it back this way. What do you want your wave to, to look like, right? Soften it down. You get these parts where you get a lot of texture, where you get a little bit of texture, where you get some, you know, very watery, slippery bits and some that aren't. Come up here above that darkness, right? Turn the brush, just on the one side. We didn't, we let it blend until it got dark and then I flipped the brush over just on that other side, right? Doesn't have to all be the same all the time. Grab the tip, come down, just like that. Oh, guys, man, I might have to buy this one back from you, buyer. I just might, I like it so much. Okay, I'm gonna come into that yellowy bit right here. We're just gonna start to make little circles until we connect in with our line and then it starts to blend itself out. Now I want to take these little bit of light 
little flicks. Different areas, different things, right? Little bits, little bits that are gonna help it sell, make them soft. One more little piece for the buyer to look at, right? She's the only one that's gonna be looking at it so deeply. So excellent, I love this one. Turned out fantastic. Keeping that darkness underneath though, right? Gotta have that dark separator, that little dark shadow. So if it's in an area where it's still a bit too bright, Come back in, take your dark paint, add a little bit more darkness, a little bit more shadowy area. You know what I mean? What do you want it to look like? Totally up to you. Come in there, mix that up into our cloud just so softly. And now you got all these little depthy areas. Very cool. Very cool. Taking the, the crimson, the black, and the blue again. And come in here. Remember I told you about that rock that we're smashing down upon? That's where it lives, right there. Gorgeous little rock. Oh, all that deep, dark color. Take our dark brown, get that back in there. A little bit of black, right? Because we really got to keep it nice and dark and deep. Throw them in a weird little, odd little shape. And then what do we do? We got to make it soft. And that way it's going to allow for the next bit of paint to grab onto the top of it. Almost like it's just a little mini mountain. Just a little teeny guy. Little teeny, tiny, mini mountain, right? Not really worried about pulling the rock in any certain direction, just making it soft enough so when we come in with our highlights and stuff, it'll remain, you know, kind of grab them, it'll grip them off of our knife. So we're gonna take the brown and the yellow, we're gonna mix those guys up right over here. Not overdo it, right? We want all these little differences. Maybe up here we came in and we just had a cool little thing. Maybe back there there was a bit of light or it came back and it connected. You start very lightly dragging off, get all these cool little bits of brightness and darkness. Take our original brown, maybe some of that black. Start throwing in our deep textured bits of our shadow. All right, again, letting everything work itself. Gotta have light areas, gotta have dark areas. Maybe a bit of black back in here behind. Maybe we had a little bit where it was just back in there. All depends, Where the, where's the light gonna reach in yours? That depends on you, right? Maybe there's a little flat spot right out here for the seagulls to sit. I, we wouldn't be there for very long because he'd probably be smashed by this bit of water that came in. But when the tide is low, maybe he goes out there and sits on that little flat area. That's what I'm gonna tell myself anyway, right? Okay, very softly, pulling in those same directions, just a couple hairs. Bob was not joking. He said three hairs and some air, just the softest bit. Just so soft. Oh God, oh geez. So, so little, so little. You don't need much of a touch up there, that's for sure. We came in over here. I just love it. I love sitting and playing with these things, especially coming in and dropping like little deep areas of darkness, right? Because that's what we're going to be looking at the most, the shadowy bits. When our brain goes, ooh, I wonder what lives back inside all those deep, dark crevices. At least that's what my brain does. I don't know about you guys. Scrape up the last little bit of our liquid white. Come in here. We're leaving little pieces connected to our water as it's being sucked back. Doesn't all have to look the same. How many times have you heard Paint With Josh say that? Doesn't all have to look the same, guys. Suck it back. Wicked. Wicked. One little mini swipe. Okay, two, three, four mini swipes on the way back. Just to soften it. And it'll rotate up. Very cool. Very cool. This guy, we need to change the angle. Right? We're going more of an upward angle versus a sideways angle. But those little angles are helping us. There we go. Gorgeous, right? The amount of paint, the amount of pressure, practice. That's all we need. Let's come in here, take up that last little bit of white and yellow. Maybe out here we have this very weird looking little bit of foamy backsplash. It's feeding its way back all the way. I right, got all these little differences. Nothing is very thick. Oh yes, because what are we gonna do? We're gonna swipe it back and make our little foamy bits. We're gonna come down, we're gonna pull some of them down, we're gonna swipe them over. So we have all these little differences in color on our canvas, right? Sliding them back into that wave, different angles, just like a clock would. Very cool, right? Making them soft. Little shivery bits out there, you can throw more rocks in. You can hide more things. You can do whatever you want to do with your, your version, right? 
I like the way my version's coming out. Very cool. Just a little bit of color and then we go soften it because all we're doing is giving the impression that it's that foamy bit out there, right? A little soft bit of color. Woo, guys. That is fantastic. All right, and we just blend it in over here. We can't even tell. Woo, guys. I don't know. That has got to be one of my faves. Let's take a little bit more of our dark color again, our blue and crimson and black. Maybe we'll throw another little section of rock right here. Just popped himself in. He was like, hey, I want to live right there. And so he dumped it down. Now we're going to come and load up that color. Get it on, make it nice and dark, right? Bang, all just like that, popping it out over here. Little bits, maybe there's a little flat spot, like I said, for the, the little seagulls to sit on right out there, right? What do you want yours to look like? That's up to you. Mine, I always try to make it look a little bit different. Sometimes we try to add like a little face or a nose or some sort of indication of something out there. All right, now we're gonna come back in. Let's grab our brush. Soften this guy down just by turning little different things, right? Maybe pull him down over here. Looks like a little Easter Island head with a, like a giant uh, afro or giant big bangs. It's like a 90s, it's a 90s lady right here. That's what my mom's hair used to look like. Big old giant bangs, right? A bit of brown, a bit of that cad or uh, yellow ochre. And then we're gonna mix up our two brown piles on their own over here. So we have little differences, right? Taking some of our black, mixing it in so it's nice and deep and dark. Not that much black, there we go. Mixing some of that black into our highlights too, just to change it, right? So we don't have all the same color. And then let's take our shadows. Maybe on the back side here, we just let them fall off. Remember the, the very back and the side of the canvas, the corner, you wanna leave that original dark mountainous purpley color. And then really come in with our highlights and highlight the bright sides, right? And the way you do that, just a little bit of that yellow ochre. Maybe he's got a little flat spot right out there for the little eagles to sit on. Just so fantastic. All right, maybe we come down over here. It got bright. Or we pull it in a different direction. Or we come over here. We push a little bit harder. We dump off a little bit of paint. We put a little bit here, a little bit there. Come back in. My favorite part, those deep, dark shadows. Right? I love those shadowy bits. They really help keep the painting nice and dark and it keeps that, uh, it helps it jump in the foreground just like crazy, right? And take a little bit, a little bit of that darkness and maybe we'll tuck it up underneath. Oh, just like that, fantastic. Our little shelf where our little seagull lives. So cool, not all of it has to be the same color, right? So take it, pull it down. Blend it in, little light areas, little dark areas. Remember, it's nighttime. This is an aurora scene at night. So softly touching in the same directions that we had pulled with our knife. All right, so over here, we kind of went down. Not trying to touch the whole thing with my, with my brush either. Just you and some little bits, little corners, little here, little there. Little things. Very cool. Very cool. And he's just out here just hanging out, living it up. Very neat. Well, guys, tell me what you think of that. I'm going to throw the old family in, and then we'll sign this guy. So start coming up with a name. What do you want to name this painting? And maybe the buyer will choose the name that you put in the comments, right? And that's always fun to be able to name a painting. So type in the names. Type in the name. What, what, what would you want to see this painting be called? And if you're asking about how we did anything earlier on, you can, you're can you gonna be able to go back and rewatch this stream as soon as it ends. You'll be able to turn it back on and watch it from the beginning. I show you how to do all the little bits, how we get all these little details, how we slid the water back, how we got the water back here, how we did the lights, how we do everything. That's what Paint With Josh likes to show. I'm like the, the mass magician that gave away all the secrets, all right? That's me. That's why all the other tutorial guys don't like me. Because I give away all the secrets, and that way everybody watches Paint With Josh, and nobody watches anybody else, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing, guys. That's what it's about. Let's take our birds, and we'll swipe through just a little bit of white. Maybe I've got little gray birds out here this time. So, I paint my family into every Paint With Josh painting, and it, they come with these little birds. And this one, they kind of look like seagulls. 
Is my watch telling me to stand? Look at this. Oh, almost there. Keep going for a few more minutes. Like I haven't been up here standing and sweating and doing all that stuff already, right? So these represent myself, my wife London, and our gorgeous daughter. And they go into every single Paint With Josh painting that we do. And it's just fantastic. So it's the only way we really get to travel anywhere. Take my little, my little fingerprint out. There we go. That's why you can't touch the canvas. It's all wet all the time. You can't be messing with it too much. You can take stuff and move it and adjust and twist and back and forth. Man, that's a great one. And we, maybe we should just put just a couple little stars out in the sky. A few little dots here and there and everywhere, right? Don't push, don't drag, don't touch too hard. Sometimes we just do little things. Sometimes I'm not even touching the canvas. It's just, you know, you go and you try to touch and you don't, and you're like, okay, move on. Move on, don't try to touch it in the same spot again. A few little things way off in the distance out there. Very cool. Some very bright, some very small. Some very faint, very far away, right? Woo! And we didn't even mess one up, so we don't even have to do a shooting star. Very cool, guys. All right. Well, this turned out to be a fantastic show. I love it. I always say, even though I paint the wave to the left most of the time, they never come out exactly the same. You know what I mean? It's never gonna be 100% the same. The sky won't be the same. The angles won't be the same. The details won't be the same. Especially the details of the veins in the eye. Those are my favorite. Last little things to throw in there. You never really expect them. So all I'm doing is grabbing a little bit of darkness that's right here underneath and using that with a little bit of pressure, however long I want them to grow but going backwards before coming down, right? Not just coming straight down. You gotta go backwards before you come down and around. Helps everything look rounded. Very cool. Okay, let's wash these brushes off. Hit me with your titles, guys. And the, the buyer might have to tell London, um, and then London can come up here and tell me what the title is, because I'm not sure that I'll be able to see it in the comments. Sea of Aurora's Divine, I like that. Excellent, come on guys, hit me with the names. Ocean's Aurora, that's a good title. Thank you guys over on YouTube for tapping the uh, that little thumbs up button, I appreciate you guys. Tap the thumbs up and help me reach more people. Right, there's a direct correlation with how many likes there is on YouTube and how many views there are, right? The videos that get a lot of likes on my page have a lot of views. And those videos that don't have very many likes, guess what, they don't have very many views. So if you want more people to see a cool seascape like this, then tap that like button, make sure it's high lit, that big old thumbs up. And if you're watching on Facebook, tap all those little emojis along the bottom. Remember to come back for Saturday sessions tomorrow morning, guys. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, which is 11 Central and noon Eastern. We're gonna be back right here, right on Facebook, right on YouTube, and we're gonna be over on TikTok. So it depends on where you wanna watch us, or if you wanna watch us on all three platforms, that's a mega fan right there. Right, if you're a mega fan, you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok all simultaneously. All right. Okay, we got that one cleaned off, right? No more paint on that brush. Well, maybe there's a little, because I keep going back and touching the canvas. So tell us what the name, what do you want to name this painting? It's a great little painting. I can't believe that this one sold as well. I mean, I've just been on this, this wicked streak, and, and you guys are just, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go tell my job that... Uh, that I, I might just quit and be a professional artist because you guys are just, you just make me feel so good. Just love you so much. Aurora Diamond, as above, so below. I like that, I like that. That's a cool title. So it all depends on what the buyer wants. This is painting number 691. We're catching up on 700, guys. Coming close to 700 paintings. Probably do, well, I mean, by, by this week, we'll, you know, by, by next week for sure, we'll be past 700. So if you're waiting to buy number 700, it's probably going to be on, uh, what, Sunday, <laughs> probably. The, but the, at the amount of rate that I paint, I've been knocking them out and just getting so much content, so many videos. Uh, I've had so many sales recently. It's just insane. 
Like you guys are, are just making my artist dreams come true. I had at least five requests for a commission today. And uh, you know, I'm like, okay, well, send me the photo. You got like, I gotta have it all written down. Otherwise I'll forget and, and start confusing some people with someone else. That's why I always have them numbered now. So I can go, okay, this person got 691. That person got 692. And then I can make sure it's the right one before I put it in the box, right? And speaking of, you're like, how do you ship your paintings? You guys wanna see? You guys wanna see one of the boxes? I'll show you one of the boxes. I'm actually gonna make, I brought home a, a blank box so I can make a video about how we do the boxes, like a newer, up-to-date video. It's gonna be much better than my old boxing videos. Those aren't the best. Did I clean this one? I think I did. All right, gotta dab them off on a paper towel. Make sure everything's clean. Let's see, do we have any comments from the buyer? I didn't even know who bought it. Seas of Valhalla, I like that one too. All right, let's back up a little bit, guys. Back up a little bit on all the cameras. Now we'll go turn it around and sign the sucker. So, let's see. There we go. Spin it around. Looks like I got a bristle stuck in it. There we go. That's how you can tell it's a real painting. It's got a bristle stuck in it. Bam! Just like that. Bring it down. Tighten it in. Otherwise, I'll push it out. So, this is a JK original, number 691. We just need a title. So what does the buyer want to title this painting? Let's see. You're awesome. Who said that? Annette, yes. Watch me on YouTube and Facebook all the time. You're so cool. I love you. I love all you guys. So in the meantime, while we're waiting on the name, let's tell you where to go to get all these cool Paint With Josh paintings or where you can go find all my videos and stuff. If you go over to youtube.com slash paint with Josh, right? You can find all my full length tutorials. They're very easy to find all in one big long list. I've got different playlists. I've got stuff for beginners. I've got seascapes. I've got mountains. I've got all sorts of stuff. So go over there and check it out. Obviously, if you're watching on YouTube, head over to Facebook because that's where we take photos of the paintings and we post those photos over on Facebook. So you can zoom in. You can see all the little tiny minute details. And that's normally where we post the links to buy them if they're not purchased during the show, which this one was. And then if you guys don't know, we're over on TikTok. I'm over there almost every night and my Instagram is the same. So you have, if you have TikTok or Instagram, go over to at paint with Josh K, right? Just throw a K at the end and you'll find us. So we're at uh, what, 171,000 on TikTok, something like something crazy like that. And uh, Facebook, we're at 140,000. So remember, you guys can go on and purchase these paintings at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. I'm an Etsy star seller. You're buying it from Paint With Josh through Etsy.com, right? And man, we've been on a hot streak. We have been on a hot streak. So let's wait and see what the buyer says as far as a title. I think London might be asleep. Sent message uh, for the thing on. Okay, tell me right now, Reen. Tell me, tell me right there. I can see you. I know what your picture looks like. Tell me the name, and now I'll be able to see it. Because if I try to go check Etsy, it's gonna pause this stream and possibly cancel it and do something all weird. So, I see you. Read Ford right there. Reen Ford. Tell me the name, and uh, I'll put it on right here for you. Just waiting on the name. My wife just bought me the Bob Ross easel. Can't wait for it to get here. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, I've never had the Bob Ross easel. They were always uh, too expensive for me. And so I had to go with uh, the Meaden easels. And then I found my way to this kind of extra large H frame, Aurora Tide, thanks to Terry. Oh, Terry must have said Aurora Tide and you chose that. Very cool. Okay, Aurora Tide. Let's put that in before we forget. Let's come up here. Aurora Tide. Excellent title. Who's ready to see it? Tell me if you're ready. Tell me to spin it around. Type it in the comments. Spin that painting. I want to see it. Yes. Thumbs up. This, that, the other. Tell me. Otherwise, I'm not going to spin it. We'll just sit here and look at my signature all day. Yep. Back here just talking to myself. Waiting on you guys. Let's see. I'm waiting on one comment. Tell me to turn it around. If you want to see what the back looks like. Okay, Melanie said spin it. I'm sure Melanie was probably thinking about purchasing this one, 
before Reen came in and snuck it away from her because Melanie loves Aurora Borealis scenes. She's purchased many Aurora Borealis scenes of mine and uh, I very much appreciate her and everyone who buys a painting. And not only that, everyone who likes and comments and does all this stuff you guys are supposed to do. Copy the link, send it to your grandma. She's gonna love me, right? And then she's gonna bug grandpa to get paints and then you're gonna be able to go over there and do Paint With Josh videos with your grandma. Come on, what a memory that would be, right? What a memory that would be. Let's wipe off all this thick, nasty paint. And then tomorrow, I'll probably be back on TikTok trying to, you know, do my living, trying to paint and make money. And as long as they keep selling, I'm gonna keep coming on here and painting them. So that's the goal, right? In order to make a living off something that you love and you never work a day in your life. I don't wanna work anymore. I just wanna do stuff I love. And you guys have made it possible for me to do my, my love, my passion. And I think it comes through in my videos how excited I am and just how real it's, you know, it's not just a person that talks like this and doesn't really tell you anything. And it's, there's two guys working out in the garage next door. Can you guys hear that? They're like, up, up, ah! I can hear you messing up my show, you. Okay. Either way, we're not gonna yell at the neighbors from across the street, but yeah, if you guys can hear that, that uh, very manly noise that's coming from the window, it's guys working out. At least I hope it's guys working out. All right, let's go over here. We're gonna set this up. If I had the strength and energy to do four paintings in a day, then I would come back for one more, but I don't know that I have that energy, guys. I really gotta get ready and do uh, one more. We got one tomorrow for our Saturday sessions show, right? We get six, we have six, yeah. I like to go six wide, that's my workspace. Six paper towels wide. So we got our Saturday session show tomorrow. If you can't buy a painting, or you don't have any wall space, or this, that, or the other, right? Whatever the excuse. That doesn't mean that you don't love candles, right? And London sells gorgeous little candles they come in a bigger tin now. This is a vintage one, you can't have it anymore, but I use it as a display, right? And, God, it smells so good, I can't get over it. But thelondoncandleco.etsy.com is her, um, her Etsy store where she pours candles live on TikTok. So if you go over and make an order, she, you can actually go over and watch your order be made right in front of your eyes, which is really cool, if you ask me. Let's see. Man, Reen, you got a great one. Didn't you buy the one from earlier today too? Or am I mistaken? Did you buy it? Is this your second one today, Reen? Man, look at all those Aurora colors in the water, all that stuff. Excellent. Okay, well, I'm gonna uh, cut the YouTube camera because I don't wanna sit up here all night. So, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I can't wait to see your version. Send it over to facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. And until we see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day and ba pow Boom! All right, I'll hang out with you guys on Facebook for a minute. Let's see, just because I love my...